The South Carolina Hall of Fame was founded in Myrtle Beach in 1973 to recognize and honor contemporary and past citizens who have made outstanding contributions to South Carolina's heritage, history, and progress. James Lyon Coker, who was the son of Caleb Coker and Hannah Lyon, one of his sons was Charles Westfield Coker. One of Charles Westfield Coker's sons was James Lyde Coker III, who was my father, and I'm James Lyde Coker IV. James Lyde Coker I was born January 3rd, 1837, in Society Hill, Darlington County, South Carolina. He attended the Citadel College, but was expelled because of an altercation with his math professor, returning home to his father, Caleb. So you send your young son off to college, and he goes to college, and he gets sent home for challenging a professor to a duel. Caleb said apparently something to the tune of, and I'm imagining this, he says, well, son, that's too bad that Charleston didn't work out for you. Why don't you go up to Harvard and study? Maybe you'll do better there. So James spent a year at Harvard studying scientific principles of farming. In 1860, James Coker married Susan Stout of Alabama, with whom he would have 10 children. He was a planter in Hartsville when the Civil War began, answering the call as an infantry commander wounded at the Battle of Chickamauga. During five months recuperating in a prison hospital, Coker spent his time brainstorming with a textile entrepreneur from Massachusetts. They apparently came up with the idea that you could replace the wooden cones that we used in the textile industry with a paper cone. It would be lighter, easier to ship, and would cost less. So, after the war, he's back in what is going to become Hartsville. And we're going to try to see if we can do this business of making paper cones. Well, first you have to have paper. They buy a junk paper machine from England, have it sent over. They put it together, they get people who can work it, learn from a, building a junk paper machine how to make paper. Then they together invent the mechanics for making paper cones. And so that by 1899, $1,500 worth of paper cones was sold to the textile industry in New England and that was the birth of the Southern Novelties Company. Now, it started as two companies. One was the Southern Novelties Company, which made the cones from the paper. That business he gave to his son, Charles Westfield. Then to his other son, James Lyd, was the paper end of it, the Carolina Fiber Company, which made the paper that then sold to the Southern Novelties Company. And it was the junction of those two companies that my father made in the 1930s that made it Sunoco. And today the company, I think, is on the neighborhood of four billion in sales and plants, approximately about 200 plants in the United States and all around the world in industrial and consumer packaging. But it all started from that paper cone. Coker, who by this time was known in Hartsville as simply the Major, was involved in many enterprises. Well, I see he started the store, which was J.L. Coker and Company, which became a major department store in Hartsville. He started the Coker Pedigree Seed, which was the seed growing and scientific tobacco planting, scientific cotton planting, and literally organic seed breeding. Coker also established the National Bank of Darlington, the Darlington Manufacturing Company, the Eastern Carolina Silver Company, and in 1889, he brought the Shira and Darlington Railroad to Hartsville. Later, he started his own railroad company. The major was a driving force behind the founding of Welsh Neck High School, which would become Coker College. One of his most important legacies was the 
starting and financing of the college. I think that the, one of the things the major realized was so very important was the education of women and the providing opportunities to get a good, strong, classically oriented education because he realized the importance of education for young people. So his support for the college as well as for other educational institutions was a real sort of centerpiece in his philosophy. Representing Hartsville in the South Carolina General Assembly, Coker introduced the state's first legislation for public education. He also served as mayor of Hartsville. Major James Lyde Coker died June 27, 1918. Beyond his impressive industrial and agricultural achievements, it was said that he was a man whose strongest principle was an absolute inflexibility between what was right and what was wrong. A man who believed in the dignity of people, whose legacy resides within the company he started. His values and ethics are still powerfully felt in Sunoco today. Sunoco's main goals are not just profit and earnings per share. Employee relations, the fair treatment of employees, honesty, safety of employees and how employees must be protected and kept safe on the job. The ethics which guide the company, not only in dealing with shareholders and financial institutions, but dealing with customers and even dealing with competitors. The sense of ethics and values permeates the company and are equally as important as the financial goals. And all of these were things that the major left as unmistakable values to be supported in all of the businesses that he started.